Now, let's address the elephant in the room. Um, Man City won the treble last night. I've got to say, and whatever you say, you're going to be called bitter and jealous. Um, I am jealous of Man City's achievements over the last five years. They've won four Premier League titles in five years. They've just won the treble. They've won the Champions League. Of course, I'm jealous of that. We haven't won a Premier League for 10 years. We haven't won a Champions League for 15 years. So, of course, I'm jealous of teams that are winning things I want to win. I, I can't deny that. So that's that's absolutely nailed on. Of course, I'm jealous and I think we're all jealous of that. This morning, do I feel as bad as I have done in the past um, when rivals win things? Look, Liverpool didn't win the treble when they won the league. And I, that hurt more than Man City winning the treble. And that's weird. I, don't, I can't even explain that. But when Liverpool won the league, that bothered me more than what I'm waking up to today. Um, Kanye, well, thank you very much for the super chat. The problem is... And this is the only point I'm going to acknowledge the people that don't want Qatar to own United. I think it has to happen if you want to win things. But when you win things, you do do it with the cheat code. And I think that takes it away. I think rival fans don't really respect it. And I don't think it feels as big for you. I'll be eternally grateful that I witnessed our treble in 99. Because it felt at times like it was, it was magical. It was against all odds. Is Man City magical and against all odds? It is for Man City fans, but for outsiders, I mean, forgetting the Chargers, I mean, and everyone's talking about the Chargers this morning, everyone, forget the Chargers, you're still talking about a club that was nothing that has been manufactured through money. So I just think that I'm surprised. Look, the hardest time for me um, as a fan, because it's harder when you're a kid, was the late 80s with Liverpool. They were so good and I bloody hated them. They all had a bloody moustache. They all wore tight-fitting red candy tops. That was the hardest time because there was no prospect of United being good. In my life, United hadn't been winning titles or European Cups. So that was the hardest time Was with, with when Liverpool in the late 80s. Um, I didn't really like it when... Arsenal, but that that you know we were we were a fifty fifty really. Arsenal were a good side, we were a good side, but this I don't know, I don't know. Look, you've got to acknowledge that Man City have won a treble. You're an idiot if you bury your head in the sand. They're the best team in Europe. They've proved that they're the best team in the world. To be fair, but I must admit, I wake up this morning and I'm like, I, I'm more about how how does this change? I'm more about how don't how how do you stop them winning it next year? For me, they've already won the Premier League. You may as well give it in now. They've already won that. Who's going to stop them in the Champions League? And they could win the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. They could go for the Invincibles. I just, I don't see how you stop them. I, I actually probably am not that, I mean, I'm bothered by it, but I'm not devastated by it because I don't feel like this is the end. I feel like it could be something else. Chelsea are close to agreeing personal terms with Anana, says Michael. Well, this is it. People buying better than us. And as far as Man City's achievements go, we can acknowledge them, but we can't respect them as much as we hate Liverpool. We can still respect them, says Navin. You're right, Mark, but this is football now and it's sad, says Nicholas. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think that if we did get Qatar, and maybe we will, maybe we won't, if you do want Qatar, that's the only way to compete with Man City. I think we all know that. But if you do get it, will it ever feel as real as it did back in 99? No, it won't. But that's football now. Football has changed. Look at Newcastle, look at Man City, look at PSG. If you want to achieve, you've got to have that level of money. Um, the City win actually puts me off Qatar as their win never seems to win anything. And it, it's uh, I've been very pro-Qatar, so it's weird, says James. Well, I get that. But if you don't choose Qatar, we'll never win anything anyway. So do you want to keep watching Man City win everything or do you want to compete? And that, for me, is the big thing. If you want to compete, you need Qatar. You need super wealth. If you don't want to compete and you just want to retire from football and watch Man City do what they did last night year after year, then go for Sir Jim. To be fair, Pickford is a decent keeper in a horrendous team, but still would take him at United even if he was free, um, says uh, Stitch. And Andy's gifted a membership. Look, I do want to talk about a bit of something here. Now, a lot of people are talking about it. You might have seen it. Uh, well, here we go. Brian says, what are your opinions on Brandon Williams' comments? So thank you very much, Brian, for asking that because I was just about to say it. So look, Brandon Williams last night got on Instagram, probably pissed or, or, or whatever because, he, he, you know, or he, or he didn't do very well in English because he can't spell for a start, which is absolutely fine. You know, there might be reasons for that. But, you know, that, that time of night, that tone of Instagram, never really done it before. Obviously, he's, he's enjoying himself somewhere. So he's basically come out and said stuff like uh, sloppy seconds and uh, Rio Ferdinand 
wouldn't congratulate Man City if he was a player, so why is he doing it now, two-faced? Get me on a podcast. And I, and to be honest with you, I, I, I think that if I'm being absolutely blunt here, that is like being at a funeral and your pissed up aunt walking in, grabbing the microphone at the front of the church and singing I Will Survive. It's just a bit embarrassing. It, 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 I, 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 the, I, I just find it embarrassing. I find it embarrassing. I, I find it really embarrassing, especially when you're talking about a player that was pissed up a few months ago, telling us how great Harry Maguire is and how great he's going to have a really good career. I'm sorry, I can't pin my hopes on a pissed up Brandon Williams Instagram post. He doesn't even get on the first team bench. Like passion, passion FC. I, 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 this is not how you win anymore. You don't win by beating your chest because Brandon Williams one of us. That, that's not how you do it. Most of the Man United first team, and Brandon Williams isn't one, most of the Man United first team last night were on holiday in nice locations, sipping a glass of wine, looking at the bank account, not giving a shit. It hurts us as fans, but most of our team don't give a shit. They don't. We haven't got Keane and Scholes and everyone like that anymore. We've got millionaires who are at Man United to expand their brand and turn up when they like. We saw that at the FA Cup a week ago. Man City didn't win the treble because they beat Inter. Man City took our treble because we couldn't be asked in the FA Cup final. That's what happened. I have got no interest in passion merchants on Instagram because that doesn't work. Passion is Scott McTominay. He ain't good enough. We need the best players. Kevin De Bruyne is not going to be on Instagram t shouting about Man United. Neither's Bernardo Silva, neither's Gundogan, because they probably don't go to bed in Man City pyjamas. And they probably didn't have posters of Sean Gota on their wall. But they are dedicated, obsessed professionals at the top of their game who, no matter what shirt they're wearing, will give their best. And that's how you win now. This passion about sloppy seconds and our trebles better than yours from players means nothing. Because you've got to have the best players and the best coach and the best infrastructure. It's soulless, but that's football. That's what it is now. You don't win Champions Leagues, Premier Leagues on passion and eating the club badge. You don't win it like that anymore. You win it by having the best coach with the best players, with the best mentality. And we don't have that. So when I see a United player on Instagram talking about passion and you don't congratulate this, that and the other, I, it doesn't register for me because I'm just like, that's that doesn't mean anything. We played them last week. You're not even in the first team, mate. I mean, I, for me, he probably just wants to go on Rio Ferdinand's podcast. That's probably what it's all about and, and wants to talk about passion and put himself in the shop window to get a move in the summer because everybody's got an angle. But I get it if it's United fans on Twitter having a go about sloppy seconds and this, that and the other. But I, I ain't got no time for players trying to give it the big un when they've just performed like they have last week in the FA Cup final. And also... I think if you've not figured out what the modern game... Look, how do you stop Manchester City? How do you stop Manchester City? You do what Man City do. You buy the best players with the best mentality who will play and turn up for you 95% of the season. That's a really important point. We need players who turn up 95% of the season. Not 70%, not 60%, not even 80%. 95%. And you've got players like Martinez, Casemiro, Varane... You know, the, those three for me this season have turned up when they've played 95% of their games. We need we need players like that because I tell you what, Bruno hasn't turned up for 95% of them. He's probably been overplayed. Luke Shaw, not 95%. M M Marcus Rashford, not 95%. Ericsson, not 95%. We've got a lot of good players, but you need players that turn up 95% of the time. There's too many last weeks. There's too many Anfields. There's too many St. James's Parks. We need players who are absolutely dedicated to putting in their best performance 95% of the time. And that's what Man City do. It's not about, you know, snogging the badge, shagging the badge, whatever it is. It's not about that. It, that's not what football's about anymore. It used to be Arsenal, the Vieira days, United, the Sir Alex days. That's not what football is now. It's it's methodical. It's 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 almost um it's almost a, you know, an algorithm. You, you, you can that's what united need to do i'm giving you